Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. I'm Sue Joss. I'm the CEO here. Um, and I'm really excited to be hosting this press conference on such an important topic. Um, lead poisoning got a lot of media attention um, when Flint, Michigan's water supply was contaminated. Um, and it's great that they've got um, that water supply um, back to normal levels. Um, but in many other communities, including Brockton, uh, the lead contamination levels in some areas of the city are just as bad, if not worse, as they were in Flint. So um, it's bittersweet to get a grant like this because the sad thing is that we need it. But um, this is a preventable condition that we really have an obligation to address for our children. Um, Dr. Dolan, who you'll hear from in a few minutes, was um, just over at Good Samaritan visiting the 10 babies who were born to our patients in the last day or so. Um, and those 10 babies deserve a chance. They deserve to live in a community, where, in, a, in a home where they can grow up healthy and, and um, not have to worry about their lives being altered. Um, by something like lead, which is totally preventable. So um, I'm really excited by this grant. Um, and especially want to thank uh, Mayor Carpenter and his staff for really taking the advocacy lead on this issue and going for this grant and really advocating um, for increased resources and um, commitment to this problem. So um, with that said, I'd like to um, ask you all to welcome our Mayor, Bill Carpenter. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you at the Neighborhood Health Center. And Sue, thank you so much for hosting this announcement this morning. Uh, you will hear about some partners of the BRA in terms of uh, administering uh, this grant and making sure that we can get these grant funds to the folks that it's intended for. And I just want to mention those organizations, uh, at least some of them that are here this morning. Uh, NeighborWorks is here with us this morning. We've got some folks from NeighborWorks. Brian Moriarty is here. Um, we also have uh, Self Help is here. Uh, Jonathan Carlson and uh, Chris McCain are here representing Self Help. Those will be the organizations that will actually be working directly with the homeowners and assisting them in completing and submitting their applications for this funding. So uh, we appreciate uh, their role. The last time, Brockton in the past did receive some HUD federal funding for lead pain abatement for low and moderate income families, but that funding ended over five years ago. And for the past five years, uh, there has been no federal money coming into the city to help with lead pain abatement, even though, you know, this city has one of the oldest housing stocks uh, in the state, and that's where the lead is found, houses that were built before 1970, particularly World War II era housing is uh, typically full of lead. Um, so priority will be given in this program for the areas where high numbers of pre-1970 homes with families, with children exist under the age of six uh, who have te tested positive uh, for lead poisoning. And uh, this is why, and we'll get the doctor up here in a minute, that the Neighborhood Health Center is such a, a key partner to us uh, in making this program work that uh, you know, they're in the business of identifying and helping the families whose children do uh, test for elevated lead levels. Um, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority uh, will utilize its resources to determine the housing units where children are at the greatest risk for lead poisoning. The grant is $2.7 million. We'll get into that in a minute, over three years. But there's also some additional money in the grant, uh, Healthy Home Supplement Funding, and that'll be used to assess housing units with additional health-related hazards. Uh, so the total money coming uh, from HUD on this program is $3 million. And then the city has a match using CDBG funding uh, through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority of another $277,000. So there will be over $3 million distributed to uh, Brockton homeowners over the next three years to help us abate lead paint, specifically targeting the most at-risk children in the most at-risk neighborhoods. Um, we also have, we, I mentioned the Neighborhood Health Center and also BAMSI is another uh, agency that will be helping us uh, locally. Uh, Brockton is, uh, by almost any measure, uh, one of the uh, cities in Massachusetts with the highest rate 
of uh, children with elevated lead levels. And uh, uh, we're actually third, third highest after Boston and Springfield. And um, uh, Dr. Dolan was explaining to me a little earlier, and she'll talk about this, that as of 2012, they've actually lowered the threshold for what's considered elevated lead, and we're not even including those children in our stats. So the, the, um, the risk and the need is even much greater than the numbers that we used in our, our grant application. Um, we're told, and we, when we do the, the, the research, that there are some census tracts in the city where the incidence of, of children with elevated lead levels can be as high as 10%, 10% of the children, not citywide, but in certain sections of the city. And Sue mentioned Flint, Michigan, and all of the, the billions of dollars and the national attention, as deserved, to get a proper water supply to uh, the families in Flint because of elevated lead. The incident of elevated lead readings in children in Flint, Michigan is 5%. So we have neighborhoods here in this city where the problem is just as great, if not even a little greater. Uh, so this really is a critical need, and it's a critical threat or risk to children who, who are growing up in the city. Um, a lot of folks have helped us get to this point, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention our federal uh, delegation, Senator Markey, Senator Warren, and Congressman Lynch. Uh, I, I recall I, I go down to D.C. Uh, several times a year to meet with them, and I remember us preparing our very first agenda for my very first meeting uh, in January of 2014, and getting HUD funding for lead pain abatement in the city was right at the top of the agenda, and it's been on the agenda every single time we've been to D.C., and I mention that because, you know, our original award was $1.3 million. Uh, but ultimately, we received a final award of $2.7 million, and uh, we do believe that the advocacy with our federal delegation, and particularly Senator Markey's office, advocating for Brockton helped direct those additional funds that are so desperately needed here in the city. Um, I also want to make sure I identify our uh, citywide grants coordinator, Paul Umano, who's here with us this morning. Uh, Paul has been with the city for about a year now. And uh, his work was instrumental, partnering with the BRA uh, in this uh, application. This was our third time around uh, seeking this funding, and the third time was the charm. Uh, but Paul did a tremendous amount of work in partnership with the BRA. So Paul, thank you for everything that you did on this. Um, so this grant, the Lead-Based lead Paint Hazard Control Grant, uh, is going to help us identify and control lead lead-based paint hazards in eligible housing, both rental and owner-occupied. And as I mentioned, the one point original award of 1.3 million uh, is now 2.7, and with the other funds added in, there'll be a total of nearly 3.3 million dollars dispersed uh, over the next three years. So we are, um, I guess we can't be happy that we have children at risk for uh, lead, however, we are very happy that after a five-year absence, there will be federal funding flowing back into the city. We believe we have the right partners and the right agencies in place uh, to make sure that the program is effective and, and gets the desired results. And uh, a quick side comment from myself as mayor, this is a double win for the city um, because not only are we really um, going to make a difference on the, on the risk, the public health hazard of lead exposure to children. Um, but the areas that we're targeting and the types of, of families and households that we're looking for this money to go to, we're really going to be looking at a lot of multifamily homes. That's the housing stock where most of the lead is. And so the multifamily homes uh, in, in primarily the central part of the city uh, these are neighborhoods that we're doing a lot of work in, uh, along with the BRA and other groups. And this is, we believe that this will be instrumental in us being able to have more owner-occupied multifamily houses that many first-time home buyers 
will now be able to purchase a multifamily house, which was the old-fashioned way of doing it. You know, decades ago, folks bought a multifamily and lived in it for so many years and eventually uh, were able to, to trade up to a single-family home or move on to a single-family home. And, you know, that's the, this lead issue, lead abatement issue, has been a real hurdle to that over the past five years. And we know to stabilize neighborhoods and improve the quality of life in neighborhoods, we need owner-occupied multifamilies. And this is now going to help a lot of families uh, not just achieve their dream of owning their first home, doing that here in Brockton, but also helping to stabilize the neighborhood because we know an owner-occupied multifamily is always better for the neighborhood uh, than an absentee-owned property. And the example I give to folks is um, that when the owner lives on the first floor, uh, they do not want a crack dealer living on the second floor. When the owner of the property lives in Cohasset, that owner only cares if the crack dealer pays the rent on time. And I'm exaggerating not very much because we see these situations over and over where individuals that pose a threat to the neighborhood are living in rental housing that's owned by an absentee owner. And so we know we need families owning and occupying these properties to make them into the family neighborhoods we want them to be. So uh, we are very excited about this. I want to personally thank uh, Robert Jenkins and the BRA and all of our other partners in this program uh, for making it possible. And uh, I'd like at this time to invite up the Executive Director of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, Robert Jenkins. Thank you everyone for attending. I'd like to thank our partners. I especially like to thank the mayor's office. Uh, as he indicated, this is our third attempt at this grant. And I remember going down to Washington with him and meeting with Senator Markey. Um, and he wasn't, he, he was right up front with Senator Markey that coincidentally, we didn't get funded, Malden did get funded. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he was, very upfront that Brockton needed this funding because this is about Brockton's future. It is about Brockton's children. Um, the fact that lead has a detrimental effect on kids or children, the most vulnerable population in the city. Um, I remember when we first started this with Paul Amano and we did this grant and then we reached to Sue um, and several other partners throughout the city to see how we can actually put together a application that we knew would get funded. Um, once again, it was Paul Amano, our office, um, working with Sue, getting consultations with Sue, uh, Neighbor Works, a number of other entities, get, just getting consultations so that we can actually demonstrate and see the numbers. Um, with that said, this is going to be a, a, like the mayor indicated, this is a, a negative, but it's a positive. The fact that we got the funding back and over the next three years, we can actually make some in some roads, inroads into the housing stock. We also do the housing rehab program. Um, I'm excited that we do have someone here that's a recent home buyer to the city of Brockton. The mayor's going to introduce her. She'll tell you. We have a lot of old housing stock. It's, it's not like the rest of the nation or the Northeast. Our housing stock is old. A lot of it hasn't been rehabbed. We get calls every day through the homeowner uh, rehab program. Um, this is going to be a good thing for the city of Brockton and for the future and the people who are looking to move into Brockton. With that, I'd like to thank you, Mayor, especially. All right, great. Thanks, so I think to, to fully understand the extent of, of, the, of the risk and the challenge here uh, with lead exposure to children in the city, uh, we asked uh, Dr. Jane Marie Dolan, one of the pediatricians here, uh, at the Neighborhood Health Center, if she could uh, come up and enlighten us a little bit. So please, doctor, join us. Thank you. Thank you, Carpenter. Okay, thank you. Um, I just um, am very happy about um, this grant coming through. I know five years ago on the task force, um, a lot of people in Brockton came together to get the lead levels down in the 13 years that I've been working in downtown Brockton. Um, the lead levels have improved, but we have a lot of work to do. Um, there's so many old houses in Brockton, especially in the downtown area. Um, actually, some of the statistics say 83% are built before the mid-70s. And if you don't rehab the buildings correctly and get rid of the paint, it's still there for the babies. 
Um, so um, in 2016, about 1% of the children tested for lead had a level over 10, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 43 children. And the vast majority are our patients here at the health center. Um, in 2012, the CDC um, had lowered actually the lead level we worried about from 10 to five. So if you add those children in from five to nine, that's another 4%. So we're talking at least 5% of the children who in this community, and most of them are in this downtown area, are being exposed to lead. We don't know all the effects of lead under 10, um, but any it's a toxin and it's in their brain. And children start you know, crawling around, putting their hands in their mouth as toddlers and infants, and brain growth is so important in the first two or three years that any lead, even a little chip of paint, can raise their blood lead level. Lead level. So we would love to get the lead level as low as possible and certainly want to get those children who are over 10, but that five to nine range, we're very aggressive about following our children. Our children are tested every year starting at the age of nine months, um, and we follow them very closely. Unfortunately, when they're in these low levels, what we call low levels under 25, there's no treatment. The treatment is to get the lead out of the house. And, um, there's no medication, we just have to follow them slowly, make sure that they you know, re reduce the risk of lead levels by cleaning their house and giving the child a good diet, but the key is getting the lead out of the house. Um, what happens to children with lead? There have been a lot of studies on lead levels, and certainly kids with very high lead levels, like over 25, can have headaches and can get very anxious. So I've seen some children around 20, very irritable, um, anxious, poor eaters and everything. But even those children in the five to 20 range um, have issues, it affects their brain. And we can't always see what the effect is until they're about four or five years old when they start going to school and we can test them. But we see lower IQ points, so kids with can um, have lower IQ points, two to three points, maybe up to seven points compared to other children um, without high lead levels. And we're comparing children who are also work living in the same type of community. So it has an effect on them. Um, they have learning disabilities, trouble reading, trouble concentrating. A lot of kids have like attention issues and hyperactivity. And we don't see those right away. We see them th throughout the school year. Um, they also, um, have a higher chance of not graduating from high school. And um, some studies have said they've had higher rate of delinquency. So this toxin that our children are being exposed to in the first couple of years of life can last forever. And we want our children to succeed in school. We want them to have a good outcome. Um, as I said, a lot of children can have a lot of attention and um, hyperactivity. We can make it very difficult for our parents to work with them. So um, I do have children who have been exposed, not high levels. We're talking 15, 11, which you think, oh, that's not too bad. It's not too high over 10. They have IEPs at school. They have behavioral problems, um, speech delays, learning problems. So these, this is a profound effect on children throughout their lifespan. So I think this is just wonderful that we're finally back getting the grants for these children because these are our most vulnerable children in downtown anyhow. So they need to succeed the best they can. Um, as I said before, the CDC is um, now looking at what happens to children with levels between five and nine. And I think what we're gonna see over the years is some subtle effects as the child gets older. Um, the risks are, you know, anybody in older housing, but also houses that haven't been renovated or are deteriorating. So as uh, Mayor Carpenter said, you know, if you have somebody who's just renting out to anybody, they're not keeping up the house, they're not remodeling it, and any child under six who's in a house with lead can get a high lead level. Um, and um, the other note is that almost 80% of the children who have high lead levels who have in fact are usually eligible for mass health or Medicaid. So this is our most vulnerable population and as we're seeing about 5% or more of our patients here with elevated leads. Um, 
It, we test children every year. We start at 9 to 12 months. We test them annually to 5. We have a lot of immigrants that come into Brockton, too, and we test those children at 5 or 6. We have less and less children coming in with high levels, so most of it what we're seeing is within the community here. Um, and the treatment, as I said, there's no treatment unless the lead levels are high. So if they're very high, over 25 or up to 60, they will be treated in Boston. But under 25, it's lead. So we're testing our children. We, we test all our children here. Um, Brockton is very one of the better towns about testing, especially at the health center, because we understand how important it is that our children get tested every year. Um, we are very aggressive at working with the state program to, to uh, treat these children and track them down. We talk about diet, making sure they get a good iron intake, calcium intake, because that helps stop the lead absorption and make sure they get enough vitamin C with their fruits so that helps get rid of the lead. But the key is prevention. We can test, we can track, but the best thing that we can do is primary prevention, having safe housing for all our children. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So I think you can, you can clearly see that the size and scope of this uh, public health threat to children here in the city of Brockton. And you know, the doctor mentioned that, that lead level of 10 uh, when they test children under six, and, and that's the measuring stick that looking at the percentage of the incidence of children under the age of six that test at 10 or above, Brockton has the third highest rate of uh, lead poisoning in children of any city community in the state. So this really is a, a critical need here in the city. Uh, we also wanted to introduce you to someone uh, who uh, is one of the very first applicants under the program for uh, lead paint abatement funding. Um, so Alafia Spencer is a brand new homeowner here in the city. We want to bring her up and introduce her. Thank you. And if I'll ask you, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and all that stuff. <laughs> so good morning. How you doing? Um, I have two kids, a three-year-old and a nine-year-old. Um, owning a home is like the, the American dream for anyone. Searching in Brockton for months to try to find a perfect home. Finally found one, and when we got the paperwork that it was built in 1900, it was a, it was a problem for me. Because at first I was, if you can't produce me a lead paint certification, that means there's a problem. Seeing that my youngest daughter is on an IEP plan, I was very concerned. Um, after moving in, we called the inspector to get the home inspected because I want a multifamily unit. When it was inspected, he came back and said, your first floor has a high level. It's a high risk. When it's being done, you need to be vacate the premises. And your second floor is at a low risk, but still need to be wiped. So in my head, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is getting expensive not to mention any other work that we had to do in order to move in for us to be comfortable. So um, after calling around, getting different inspectors, getting in different contractors with licensing to figure out how the price was really high, something that a new homeowner does really not want to pick up, especially if you're thinking about your mortgage, you don't have a tenant, all that. It's just, it just got overwhelming. So I did a few research. I called a couple of places. I ended up reached out to Laura's office um, and then found out that you guys recently just got approved by the federal in order to get the grant. Excitement. <laughs> I was happy, because I'm like, yes, I can finally apply for something. Someone will be able to help me. Um, but my main concern was that I was relieved, that at least there is some form of resources that I'd be able to take advantage of as a new homeowner. Um, and I'm really happy that it's here, because being able to have a home that's built in 1900, not only does the insurance company have a ton load of questions, but as a homeowner, you walk around and you see different areas, you see different items. Um, and being inside your home, reading over the inspection report over and over and over, you're like, okay, don't put nothing in your mouth. Be very careful. Call in a pediatrician. Can I get a lead paint test in? She's like, don't be alarmed. It's, you know, just calm down. Do the necessary steps that's needed to get it out the home. Once my home is deleted, then I'll be relief. And that's what I'm thinking. Mayor um, Carpenter, I'm thinking the redevelopment office, I'm thinking everyone. <laughs> that was a part of making this dream come true because not only does it gives me a sense of relief, but I'm still happy that I can be comfortable in my home and not be at risk. You know? Well, thank you.
Thank you, Alafia, and thank you for, for coming down and sharing uh, your family's story. So when, when you listen to Alafia talk about her experience buying her first house here in Brockton in a, a multifamily home, you can see why we, we really believe that we have all the right partners put together um, to really make this uh, program work. Uh, the Neighborhood Health Center here with the pediatricians serving a lot of at-risk children, and they'll be able to identify specific homes where they believe lead is, is elevated. Uh, we've got NeighborWorks working with first-time home buyers and doing buyer education, and they'll be able to connect potential first-time buyers that may really want to buy that multifamily, and they can just barely get over the bar with down payment and closing costs, but then the lead paint abatement makes it cost prohibitive to buy that home. They'll now be able to connect them with this program and, and help them apply and, and get the funding. And then, naturally, self-help. Uh, who runs the Head Start program here in the city. They're working with uh, early childhood, the kids right in that age group that we're really concerned about, so that they'll be instrumental in helping to get that information. Uh, so we, we believe, um, and, and the BRA is our lead agency, the Redevelopment Authority, and um, we're working with the BRA in a number of really critical projects for the city's future. And this one is right up there. This is one that we've all worked really hard on uh, to make happen, and, and we are excited that over the next three years, there'll be over a million dollars a year dispersed in the city of Brockton to help families and homeowners uh, abate the lead paint in their properties. And we know that uh, three years from now, the city will be a much safer place for children growing up, particularly low and moderate income children, uh, by the work that will get done with this grant over the next three years. So. Thank you. My personal thanks to everybody, all the agencies that are helping us. And Alafia, thank you for taking your time to come down and I think really personalize and show people that this is about real families, real children, real homeowners. Um, we get lost in the stats sometime and need to be reminded that this is really about families and children. And that's what this grant is really all about. So thank you.